Hi everyone, it's Shannon. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I hope you will hit that subscribe button because you'll find new DIYs, tutorials, and new inspiration here every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Today I have a trash to treasure for you. I am working on a coffee table that I found at my local thrift store. It was only $5. I had my eye out for one for quite some time. I really wanted a round coffee table to fit in nicely with our sectional that we have in the living room. And so I had actually previously purchased a round tabletop and was gonna build my own until one day I came across this beautiful piece that was only $5 and I couldn't pass it up. It definitely needs some work. It has some broken pieces here and there. And I've used it the way it is in the meantime because it actually is a beautiful piece the way it is. I like the different tones of wood that it kind of brings to the space. But I recently purchased a new area rug for our living room and I really want to make this whole space work together. So that's what's prompting me to go ahead and give this table a base lift today. So let's go ahead and get started on the transformation. All right, so first step I'm gonna do is just tighten all these screws down. It's pretty rickety, like it's been uh, moved around quite a bit. So I'm gonna make sure it's tightened up. And then I also have this board that you could see on the top that was coming apart. So the top was on even and so I'm just gonna add a scrap piece of wood onto the back there screw it in that way it'll pull those tight together and flush And now I'm just gonna take a wipe and wipe this all down clean. Luckily, I'm gonna chalk paint this and it will stick to any kind of surface pretty much. So there's no prep work involved. I don't have to sand this down. It probably wouldn't hurt to do just a little bit just to get any uneven surfaces, but it will not affect how the, the paint will work. So I'm just gonna clean this up really good and then I'm gonna start adding my chalk paint. give this coffee table a chippy farmhouse sort of weathered look and I learned this technique at Creativation Conference. If you missed that video, I'll put that down in the description box. We learned all kinds of new things, saw so many new products and I'm sort of obsessed with this technique and I'm thinking to myself, where can I add this because I actually really, really love it and this coffee table can be more perfect. So my plan is to give the whole coffee table one coat of this Waverly chalk paint in the color Elephant, so it's a dark gray. It's just gonna get one coat over the entire thing and then I'm gonna let that dry. And then I'll take you over because we're gonna work on the legs and I sort of have an idea of how I wanna do that too. I'm gonna get the paint on the top first and then we'll move over to the legs. The paint brushes that I'm gonna be using, I love these. They're in my Amazon favorite store and I'll link those down below. They are actually made for chalk paint. They are by Vintage Tonality. They are not, I'm not sponsored in any way. They have reached out and I've worked with them before, but I am going to go ahead and use these for this table. The, this actual set that'll be in my Amazon favorite store comes with this whole set of uh, paint brushes, distressing items, gloves, soap to clean them, a little bag to keep them all together in, and I just love it. So I thought I would mention that before I got started painting. So now over on this side of my workshop, I'm gonna be setting up painting my legs so that way I can clean them and paint them. And I wanna make it really easy. So these legs just screwed out from the bottom of the coffee table, so they have screws on them already. And I'm using a 15 64 inch drill bit. I'm just gonna space those out along this two by four. I'll clamp the two by four to my work table and then I'll be able to wipe them all down and then add a coat of that gray chalk paint.
All right, so these are all dry now and I can move on to the next step, but I did want to mention that those paint brushes make it so much easier to get down into all those grooves. So I just thought that was worth mentioning because it just makes the job go so much faster. It just gets down in there really, really nicely. The only thing is, is the biggest brush doesn't fit down in the Waverly chalk paint bottle. So you will need a bucket or a cup or something to pour your paint into, but then you're good to go. So now that I have all of the spindle legs done, let me spin you over here. And here is the coffee table top that is all dry. I am going to start adding the distressing uh, prep part. So these are votive candles from Walmart. They come in a pack of four and they were under $1. And basically what it's gonna do is put a barrier between this gray coat of paint and our next coat of paint, which will be white. So whenever we go to distress it, it's not gonna peel off the gray paint. It will just peel off the white paint and the gray paint will show through. So what I'm gonna do is just take one of these candles, I'm gonna run it over the entire surface, especially hitting all of the edges where it would naturally chip and also underneath there too, because I want it to look chippy underneath the, the rim. And then I'll do the same thing to the spindle legs over here, adding the uh, wax from the candles onto the entire surface. So now that all of my surfaces are covered completely with the candle wax, I'm gonna come in with a dry rag and just wipe it off, get any kind of lumps or gooey parts off of there. And then I'm gonna take my white chalk paint in the same uh, chalk paint brush that I used for the gray. And we're gonna give this one good coat of paint. We're gonna let that tack up just a little bit before we come back in with a second coat of the white chalk paint. And that second coat we're gonna let dry completely. So here's the coffee table top all dry with two coats of paint and now it's time to distress it which is the really really fun part. I actually got these from the conference as well. They are scrapers and I'll put those in my Amazon favorite store too. You can find that in the link below. Um, but I, like I said, I don't know how I lived without these before. They are so simple but they are so handy and it comes in a set of four. So I've only used this little one, but since I'm using the bigger um, surface here, I think I'm gonna use one of the medium ones to kind of help get some bigger distressing spots. Um, but they're so inexpensive. You could also use um, like a old debit card or an old uh, gift card instead if you have one of those on hand, but these are just really, really fun and handy to have. So what I'm gonna do is really hit the edges of this, cause that's where it would naturally be chippy. And I'm also gonna hit some of the middle spots, especially where there's little cracks and things where it would chip more. I'll also make sure to get around here, around the edges. 
Back here, I have my spindle legs drying, and once those will dry, I will take the smaller little scraper and make those chippy as well. And now that I have all of my distressing done, I'm sure you're gonna ask about sealing it. I would highly recommend sealing it because white chalk paint tends to take on all the dirt and the dust and turn colors. So I recommend using this polycrylic. It is a acrylic based sealer. So it does not yellow, especially if you're using white, you don't want your top coat to yellow it. So this is a clear matte finish. That way I still kind of get the uh, chalk paint, chalky finish still, and that doesn't get ruined too much, but it seals it all up nicely. Um, and then it'll preserve it too. Otherwise you'll get, you'll still get lots more chipping happening if you don't seal it. So I'm gonna let my chalk paint cure for 24 hours and then I'll come back and add my polycrylic, put my table all back together and it'll be finished. all so very much for joining me for today's tutorial I hope that it inspired you if it did please give this video a thumbs up for me and don't forget to check the link that I'll have in the description box to some of the products that I used in today's video if you haven't yet please click that subscribe button next to me I'll have more great DIY tutorials in the link below that and make sure to come find me on Facebook and on Instagram for more inspiration thanks so much again and I'll see you next time bye everyone